Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today we will be checking out Ubuntu DDE. So let's get started. Now, I haven't been this excited for a new desktop environment for a very long time. Actually, since Pop! OS, you could say. Now, Deepin Linux or Deepin desktop environment is not new to the market. It's actually been around for a little bit. And I've actually did a review, I think last year on the actual Deepin Linux desktop. And I didn't really stay with the desktop, even though I really liked it a lot. And that's because of a couple of factors. One, the update servers are all based in China. So to get an update will actually take hours or even more just to do a system update. Two, the biggest factor is that they have their deep in store, which a lot of people speculates that it has spyware in there because it was made in China and all this other stuff. So those were the two main factors that why I didn't stay with it. And I think a lot of people didn't stick with it. And the third fact, which does not have to do with this reasoning, is that deep in Linux is based off Debian, which originally was based off Ubuntu. And then they switched back to Debian. So it's on a Debian platform. Also keep in mind that Ubuntu DDE is actually not an official flavor of Linux, but they do eventually want to get there. And they do have a huge team backing the development team up. They have like Alan Pope from Snapcraft and Ubuntu Budgie helping them out. They also have, I think, uh, Cinnamon was also helping them out and a bunch of other people helping this project out to make it actually happen. So there is a lot of people backing this project up to get this to a point where it could maybe be an official flavor of Ubuntu. Now I gotta say, I really, really like this desktop and everything that I basically want in a desktop is here in this desktop. And normally I would take about a week or two to use the desktop, modify it, see how my workflow works out and then just start editing it like the way I would do with those pop OS reviews and elementary OS. If something's missing, I would add it back in and figure out how to do it. But I'm telling you this desktop, I didn't have to do anything to it to make it the way I wanted to. So let's check it out now. So the install process to this guy is fairly simple. It's very, very straightforward and it wasn't too long of a process. So you probably should be able to get through that with no problem. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that you have this little task menu bar right on the bottom, which I really, really like. It's not something I had to actually uh, install like Pop! OS, I would have to do dash to dock or dash to panel, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, it, it already comes default with this. Then you have the start menu thing that's very similar to Windows 10. And you could just type in to see what you want. Like if I wanted OBS, it would pop up over here. If I have all categories, I could just choose between the categories, which is something that I really, really like. Then you have your little quick menus here if you need to go to a documents or downloads or stuff like that. Now, the biggest feature about Deep in Linux is that their settings menu. It's not a dialog box that pops up, but it's a, a panel to the right and it has a ton, a ton of settings. Now, before I get into the settings, you're gonna also notice that this also has a blurry effect. It's, it's like a mix between GNOME and a mix between KDE and boom, they had a child and spit this thing out. And it, it is amazing. I really, really enjoy using this operating system. Everything looks so clean. And I love the blur effect from uh, KDE as well as the operations of GNOME with the arc menu and everything. So it's very, very similar to that. But if you wanted to switch the menu to look like GNOME, you click on that little top right button and now you have like a GNOME looking like menu. And if you want to make it more like GNOME, you can switch it down to like a dock down here. And there you have it. Every time you press the menu button, now you have this menu. Not a huge fan of this menu, but you know, there's some people who really like it. So switching it back, if I was to go over to efficiency mode and then minimize that top right button, now I have my regular menu back and it's already pre-built in. So if I was still going to like Firefox over here, you're going to see the blurry effect. Look at that. So pretty. All right, let's check out the settings. So if I was to go over to the settings and scroll down each one, you do have fractional scaling. This is huge because there's a lot of Linux desktop that doesn't have it. And some of them you have to actually force to enable it like GNOME. You have to force it just to get the uh, fractional scaling. And the fractional scaling in GNOME is still buggy as hell. I mean, it doubles the resolution, then shrinks it down. So when you're trying to open a game, the resolution is actually 4,000 something. It's a mess, but you know, it, uh, it's appealing. It works, but it's still a mess. On this one, that doesn't have that problem. It has a 1.2, 1.5, all the scaling that you really need. You can also rotate the screen, change the brightness if you got a laptop. 
uh, your default applications is something that you could actually switch here to like your main uh, web browser if you want Chrome instead of Firefox this is where you would change everything uh, there's this one huge application that I'm going to show you a little bit later that is one of my favorites on any Linux distro I, I believe I should just install this one software for all my Linux distros but anyway Moving down, you have your transparency that you could change, your theme. So they do actually have like a dark theme and a light theme and all that other stuff. I don't know why it's not showing a preview right now, but it does have a dark theme and a light theme. Um, I'm gonna get into that a little bit later because the dark theme is a little bit buggy. As well as fonts that you could change and window effects. So if you have like a weaker laptop or a weaker desktop and you don't wanna show all this blurry effect, you could actually disable this option and everything would be like a solid color. So let me do that right now and you will see solid color. Then if I want to switch it back, see there's no more blurry effect. It actually runs pretty quick with it like this. So let me turn it back on because I like the pretty menus. So going down, we have our network cards and one thing that they did do, which I, you don't see it here because I don't have a wireless card installed, but if you have a wireless card installed over here, it would actually display with a hotspot. You can actually turn your Wi-Fi card into a hotspot right through this menu here without having to go through tons of options just to figure out how to do it. Much like your phone where you could just enable your hotspot if you're connected to 4G or something like that, this has that option too. So if you're connected by wire, you could turn your Wi-Fi card into a hotspot, which I thought was really cool. Then you have your sound settings and it does keep your default sound. So if you were to change it to like say HDMI 6, which is my monitor right now, that will keep it as default when it reboots, which is a huge problem for elementary OS because it never stays. That's that's my problem with it. You could also have sound effects and one of the dumbest sound effects that I've ever heard is the boot up sound, so I'm gonna disable that now. Then you have your time zone, your power management setting, and your mouse trackpad, acceleration, speed, keyboard, and your updates, and then whatever the system information is and i'm currently on a ryzen 7 1700 with 8 core 16 gigs of ram and 512 gigabytes of hard drive and then you have your edition license which doesn't really say anything it just says it's yeah oh well what's also cool is if you're going to be dual booting you have a boot menu here which you could actually enable themes put up a startup delay and if you have like a couple of other settings here like windows 10 or whatever it is you could choose which one to be default and stuff so i thought that was a really neat option that they actually included this into the all settings. So let's take a look at shortcuts while we're here. And they do have a ton of shortcuts. Oh, they actually have a screen recorder. I did not know they had a screen recorder. Maybe I should have tried that out. Um, they have a terminal, which is, I forgot what this particular terminal is called, tilde, T-I-L-I-X, -T I, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Let me see, deep in terminal. It's called deep in terminal, but this looks just like T-I-L-I-X. Uh, what other shortcut keys do they have? Alt-Tab, full uh, delay screenshot, screenshot, um, switch windows, show desktop. Also, it's a very similar to Windows. They have show desktop, file manager, and lock screen. So if I was to have something up like this, Windows key D would bring it back. Then you have um, file manager, which is Windows E. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then maximize, minimize windows, uh, multiple desktops. Oh, one of the cool things I have about the multiple desktops is that they changed the wallpaper, which I really, really like because one of the things about me when I use multiple desktops is that if it's the same wallpaper, I sometimes forget which desktop I'm on and there's no number there. It's just a different desktop and I forget which desktop I'm on and I have other utilities on whatever desktop. So having a different wallpaper for each one is really cool. And that's it for the uh, settings. So moving on, I'm gonna show you an application that I really, really like. One of the best applications that they have for Deep in Linux is Screenshot. This, my God, is probably one of the best applications ever. So you could just highlight whatever you want. This is, well, if you do like the edges over here, it'll actually capture the entire screen. If you uh, choose an application, well, this has OBS behind it. That's why it looks so weird, but OBS should be here. Then you have Firefox and you can have the Firefox window. And what I like is if I was to select this, now I have a drawing menu, much like what Windows have with their snippet tool, but you have way more like different options. I could type in text if I wanted to, change the font size to that, draw more stuff, 
change the icon and if I at the end of the day I could save it either in, as a file or a folder or to my clipboard and I could change the quality of it if I want to be a large file or a small file depending who I'm sending it to so if I want to say like so let's save this file there you go another thing is we now have desktop icons so unlike elementary os where there was an actually desktop icons we now have desktop icons opening this up it will show you what we just recorded or screenshot which is pretty cool that that is one of my by far favorite programs that deepin linux has and that's a deepin linux uh, screenshot program which i plan to install on my other linux distros Moving on, uh, they are using the Ubuntu Software Center, so it's no longer deep in software, which is really good. Um, so if you're familiar with Ubuntu Software Center, let me see if I can Software Center, come on. Uh, you will probably be familiar with this already, which is basically the same as any Ubuntu install. And that was, like I said, the biggest complaint about deep in Linux. Something that I already showed you guys, which is their system manager, and I believe it's shift control escape and it'll pull this up and it shows a pretty clean system manager so another thing about the menu is that if you right click and this is something i've always been saying that a taskbar is very efficient they even say efficiency mode is with the taskbar down here but if you go into fashion mode you can actually switch it over to like a little docking style over here and then uh, you can switch it back by right clicking that uh, there's all these other plugins that you could change to if you want a 12 hour time if you right click on each one there's actually like different options for each button so if i right click on here i could just shut down instead of clicking it and yeah i have my little system tray that elementary os did not have and actually uh, pop os don't even have as well so system tray was a huge bonus um and then they have a lot of default applications that you will find on ubuntu another thing that they have is laptop mode tools which is really cool if you were to install this on a laptop you can actually see that there is these tools that you can enable or disable certain things, frequencies. If you got a triple EPC, you could actually turn this on, uh, stuff like that. It's, it's really, really cool that they have this menu because a lot of distros don't supply something for laptop modes. Let me show you guys the dark mode. I just popped open the Ubuntu uh, Software Center. I'm gonna switch over here and change it over to the theme. Where's the theme? to dark mode let me go here theme and switch over to dark mode so you're going to see that one the dark mode is now working and i should really log off and log back in just to show you all the things but i've tried this many times and it didn't do it so let me see if this works so let me log out and log back in and hopefully it takes it system wide and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about all right, so we are back and I just logged back in and you're gonna notice if I was to go back into Software Center, it is completely dark, which looks pretty cool. But here's my pet peeve about it. If I was to open this and it's in dark mode right now and I open my file manager, why is this still white? And in order for me to switch it over to dark, I would have to manually go into dark theme and switch it. Now, another thing is that if you were to switch it to dark theme, um, a few things don't add up. So let me show you another. Um, if I was to go to G party, okay. Pop that open. Okay, now this is the white menu. So I type in the wrong password, typed in the password, okay. Now this is the dark, but why is these two different themes? Like the color does not match up on the title bar. So if I was to go to another program, say this. Why is it white? You know, that's just my complaint. I switched to dark mode. Why is it still all like white mode? Now that I switched to dark mode, why is this so much darker than everything else? And so it's not consistent change between the dark mode and the light mode. So I'd rather just keep it in the white mode. Uh, another thing that I have is these little glitchiness. If you saw it on the bottom, I have like these little weird white bars. That's been happening a little bit more often. I don't know if it's something that they'll fix, but uh, that doesn't stop me from using the operating system it's just the only little thing is that this theming mode where when it goes to dark and white it doesn't like match up and not all programs switch to white so that's a little thing that i have going on otherwise i mean i i really like using this operating system i've used it for the past three days got all my programs installed the ones that i need 
Um, it works flawlessly. It gives me the task manager. Games work fine. Um, no problem whatsoever. My only complaint was that little, you know, dark and light mode. I'm probably going to be using this for a couple more days before I switch over to Pop! OS and test out that operating system to see what they have in store because I'm really excited to test out their tiling Windows menu on that. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this distro, leave it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as the same man, our cave, hack till it hurts.